This talk marks the 10-year anniversary of the Royal Danish Library Digitization and Crowdsourcing Project and Aerial View of Denmark. The project has digitized the library's collection of more than 2 million aerial images and made them available online. The collection basically consists of two types of aerial images, vertically and oblique. Here the two types are illustrated with the village of Fyn, or the village of Ørskov for Fyn. Initial oblique area images were mainly recorded of cityscapes such as this one shown in the Royal Danish Library and the harbor of Copenhagen in the end of the 1920s. In the 1930s, aerial photo companies started to record images of farms and houses in rural Denmark. And between 1930 and 1990, most Danish farms were recorded three to four times or even more, as illustrated with this farm from Fyn. Aerial images soon became an integrated part of rural culture and during the period from late 1930s to early 1960s, most Danish farms of a certain standard acquired aerial photos of the property and other kind of merchandise. This huge demand for aerial images resulted in an emergence of several aerial, aerial photo, photo companies, recording hundreds of thousands of images. Vertical images became widespread in the 1960s due to the demand for image for mapping and construction purposes. Millions of vertical images have been recorded of Denmark by several private companies as well as domestic and foreign government agencies. Vertical images are an important asset to document landscape change, uh, such as in this case with mining activities at Fitzdevons. Today, most of the, these archives have been acquired by the Royal Danish Library and the collection numbers several millions of aerial images. Retrieving of photos from the physical archive is time consuming because each company our agency had its own archive structure and registers. In order to find an image, one needs to consult up to eight different maps and registers. This is a severely limiting factor to the use of the archive. The difficulties with accessing the archive led to the development of a digitization project. And in 2010, the Royal Danish Library received a grant to start the project of digitization of aerial images for the island of Fyn. Today, the project has been expanded to cover all of Denmark. Digitization has been carried out by the Digitization Department of the Library since 2011. A special web portal was developed for the project, which both served as an outlet for the images as a, and as a site for user engagement in form of crowdsourcing. Photos were shown geographically on a background on historical and contemporary auto photos and later topographic maps. Users can geolocate images using the web portal. Red drops indicates a photo which has not yet been geolocated and green drops indicate a correctly placed photo. Users are giving three points for placing a photo, which has been a strong motivational factor. Top users uh, were presented on a, at a scoreboard and some of them have placed several hundred thousand of photos. The crowdsourcing was a huge success and the users almost kept up with the images as these became published online. The workload of the crowd currently equals 80 years of full-time work. All data from an aerial view of Denmark are available as freely accessible data. The data is not only available at the web portal, but can also be retrieved through an API. This allows for a number of other users of the image, images. The huge number of geolocated images and the accessibility, accessibility through the API means that the data from an aerial view of Denmark can be used by planning and regulatory authorities, as well as consultancy firms within construction, environmental management, and legal industries. This picture shows the Grinstead chemical plant in 1975, showing a careless storage of chemical barrels on open land, and indispensable information for potential future cleanup. The first case of professional use of an aerial view of Denmark is Fyn, which makes data available for the use in administrative systems and municipalities of Fyn. Data has also been used by Dean Geo, which enables the ability to view historical images of properties in relation to property sale. Another example shows how data is an important data source for environmental screening of potential pollutions, such as this case from Ringe at Fyn. An aerial view of Denmark has been a great success in relation to user engagement and making historical image available to the wider public. However, as outlined in this presentation, open heritage data do in some cases also have a significant potential as key data source to tackle present day problems, such as environmental management, Transition, transition towards a sustainable future and settling legal disputes. We would like to make the point not only to evaluate the impact of digitized historical data in terms of access to cultural heritage, but also as a valuable data source for a wider range of use within public sector and industry. Thank you for your attention.